One of the great ways to accessorize your Nintendo Switch is to simply replace the Joy-Cons with custom colored ones. This can be a pricey endeavor since a pair of OEM Nintendo Joy-Cons can cost north of $70. However, if you are willing to put in a little bit of elbow grease, you can customize your own Joy-Cons in ways that are not even offered by Nintendo themselves. So sit back, relax, and join me as we add some retro flair to my Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. In today's episode, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. This is something that I've actually wanted to do for a while now, so I decided to make a video about it. So when it comes to Joy-Cons, Nintendo has some really good color options. However, if you do wanna buy those, they can actually be pretty pricey. The going rate for Joy-Cons is about $70 and they can actually go north of that. And the actual offerings that Nintendo does have are actually pretty limited. So if you actually have a spare set of Joy-Cons like I do, you can easily customize them by simply replacing the shell. There are many third-party manufacturers that offer some pretty cool custom shells for the Joy-Cons. So I do have a spare set of Joy-Cons. Now, these are standard gray ones, and I, so I have two sets of these. And, you know, they're kind of boring. These are the original ones that did come with the unit. And so I decided to give these a sort of retro makeover using some Super Nintendo themed shells from a company called Extreme Rate. But one of the things that's actually interested me even more than just changing the shell is the fact that some of these aftermarket shells can change the original direction buttons into a traditional D-pad. So a lot of people thought that the left Joy-Con should have come from the manufacturer with a standard D-pad. But one of the features of the Nintendo Switch and actually how it was kind of marketed was that you could actually use this Joy-Con as a single controller. So in doing that, you would need to have individual buttons like this in order to make them very similar to each other and have a similar button layout. And having a D-pad here would have kind of defeated the whole purpose of that. Now, I don't mind because I typically use my Joy-Cons attached to the Nintendo Switch and I really don't use that feature all that often. So I'm really, really excited to see how the D-pad really works using these extreme rate Joy-Con shells. So before we get started, I'm going to, of course, unbox the kit and show you all the components that it comes with. So this is the kit I got here. I ordered it from Amazon. And like I said, the thing that really interested me the most about this was that we do get a traditional D-pad. And on top of that, we do have a pretty cool Super Nintendo theme to these Joy-Cons. All right, so let's go ahead and open this up. Okay, and there's nothing else in there. So when you first open up the unit, we're presented with the actual Joy-Con shells themselves, and they do look pretty nice. I do have to say they did kind of mimic the Super Nintendo theme fairly well. So let's go ahead and take these out. And as you can see, most importantly, traditional D-pad. And when you compare that with the original Joy-Con, you see we have the button, the four buttons for the for the directions, and not a traditional D-pad. So we will be installing that, and I'm actually really excited to see how it's been implemented by Extreme Rate, and I'll let you know if it's actually, uh, if it functions well, and if it is a viable solution to adding the D-pad to your Nintendo Switch. So we're gonna move on to the next layer of the packaging. We do have some uh, documentation all right, and then here we have, um, wow, a a driver uh, unit. So this is um, this is actually metal. I don't know if you can see that, but this is actually kind of kind of a nice touch. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to I'm going to use this for the install. I'm not going to use my actual iFixit uh, screwdriver kit uh, because I do want to see if this is a nice option, especially if you don't have a a, a screwdriver kit. Uh, but you do have a switch and you do want to replace a shell. I'm going to, so I'm going to let you know how well this actually works. So I'm going to use this for the actual install. 
So here we have our, our sort of action buttons and we have our triggers and most importantly, our D-pad. And this D-pad is actually kind of nice. I think it's gonna feel pretty good. All right, so, so those are your various buttons. In the last bag in the package uh, are all your various uh, screws, your various fasteners and springs as well as the two driving bits. And I'm assuming one is a tri-wing and then the other is a, is a Phillips. So here we have the tri-wing, which is the darker one, and then the silver driving bit, and these are magnetized, and this is the Phillips. So yeah, um, there you go, there you have it. The screws, the drivers, the buttons, the actual shells and a uh, screwdriver. All right, so that's everything that's included in the kit. In order to complete this mod, you're gonna need the following items. Please feel free to pause the screen so you can take note of them. All right, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. All right, with the tunes queued up, let's go ahead and get started. First, grab your left Joy-Con, and we're gonna start by removing the four tri-wing screws on the back of the Joy-Con. And the screwdriver seems to be actually doing a pretty good job. All right, with the screws removed, carefully split open the Joy-Con, uh, taking note of the two ribbon cables. Then remove the single Phillips screw holding the slider to the rear shell housing. And then once you pull it apart, be mindful of the slider button. Next, we're gonna remove the screw to the right of the HD rumble assembly. After that, pry the battery out of the battery bay and set it to the side. Now remove the bottom right and the top left screw holding down the battery tray. With both of those out, we can now take the battery tray and set that to the side. I like to draw simple diagrams so that I can remember where I got each of my screws from. This is optional, but it helps a lot. Next, we're going to remove the two screws securing the PCB to the Joy-Con. First, we're going to remove the top right, and then we'll remove the bottom left. Next, we're going to remove the two screws securing the left trigger PCB to the Joy-Con, as well as the single screw securing the minus button PCB. Once those are removed, set the ribbon cable out of the way so we can access the screws for the joystick. There are two screws securing the joystick, and before we actually remove them, I'm going to draw a small diagram so I know exactly where I got them from. After you remove the two screws, go ahead and remove the left trigger. Next we can remove the HD rumble assembly. A spudger is really helpful for this. With that removed, we can now take out the entire circuitry of the Joy-Con in one single piece. But do be careful because all these ribbon cables are very delicate and we don't want to break any of them. Once it's out, remove all the buttons and the membranes. Set the Joy-Con circuitry aside for now. Grab the new Joy-Con shell and open it up. We will not be using the battery tray from this kit. Grab your D-pad and set it in place, as well as all the other buttons and membranes. With everything back in its place, we can now reinstall the circuitry into the Joy-Con. I like to start with placing the PCB in its location first, followed by the joystick. Getting everything aligned can be tricky, but take your time. Once the PCB and the joystick are in place, we're going to start off by securing the PCB with the two Phillips screws. Keep in mind that we have to re-thread each of these inside the new shell. Do not over tighten. Next we're going to secure the joystick in place with the two Phillips screws. Now 
After that, secure the minus button PCB in place with a single Phillips screw. And then the left trigger PCB with two Phillips screws. Again, keeping track of all these screws is critical. My iFixit magnetic board really helps out with this task. Okay, place your left trigger in its place and give it a couple test clicks to make sure it's properly seated. Next, put the HD rumble assembly back into its cubby at the bottom of the Joy-Con. And then carefully flip the battery tray into its place. Secure the battery tray in place with the three Phillips screws. Once that's done, put the battery and stick it in place. Okay, next we're going to replace the SL and SR button with purple ones that are included in this kit. First, remove the two Phillips screws, securing the slider PCB in place. With that removed, you can take out the buttons and then take out their respective membranes. Go ahead and reinstall these membranes into the new buttons and then reinstall those buttons into the slider assembly. And now you can secure the slider PCB back in place by reinstalling the two Phillips screws. Next, install the slider button and then the slider itself into the rear shell housing and then secure it in place with the single Phillips screw. And now we can button up this Joy-Con by sandwiching it together and securing it with the four tri-wing screws. Alright, next test all the buttons to make sure they're all working properly. Alright, and we're done with that, so go ahead and grab your right Joy-Con. And we're going to do the same thing over again. Start by removing the four tri-wing screws. Again, remember, organization is key. Keep track of where you're getting all your screws from. Now go ahead and open up the Joy-Con. and again remove the single Phillips screw securing the slider to the rear shell housing. This time we're going to replace the SL and SR button first. It's the same process as the other Joy-Con. I'm going to go ahead and draw some diagrams so I can keep track of these screws. Remove the three Phillips screws securing the battery tray in place. After that, pry the battery out of its tray and set it aside. And now carefully maneuver the battery tray being mindful of the small ribbon cable that's kind of holding it in place, take care to not damage that because it is kind of tight and you do have to sort of maneuver it in a way where you're not going to put too much pressure on that ribbon cable. So be very careful with this step. With that out of the way, remove the two Phillips screws securing the PCB to the Joy-Con. After that, remove the two Phillips screws securing the joystick to the Joy-Con. After those are removed, go ahead and pry out the HD rumble assembly from its little cubby at the bottom of the Joy-Con. Carefully remove the circuitry out of the way so you can remove the IR assembly from the Joy-Con. The IR cable is adhered to the Joy-Con, so carefully remove it using your spudger. With that out, the circuitry is now fully removed from the Joy-Con. Go ahead and set it aside for now. Grab your new shell and install all of your new buttons and membranes.
Now we can reinstall the Joy-Con circuitry. Just put it back in the same order that you removed it, starting with the IR assembly. Then fold over the PCB and joystick back into its location. Again, be sure to take your time. Once the PCB and joystick are in place, go ahead and secure the PCB in place using the two Phillips screws. After that, secure the joystick using the two Phillips screws. Now reinstall your HD rumble assembly, making sure it's properly adhered to the bottom of your Joy-Con. And then reinstall your left trigger. And then again, carefully maneuver the battery tray back into its location, and then secure it in place using the three Phillips screws. All right, once that's done, go ahead and place the battery into the battery tray and the small antenna into its appropriate location in the battery tray. All right, fantastic. Go ahead and place the slider button into the rear shell and reinstall the slider to the rear shell housing. Secure it in place using the single Phillips screw. And now sandwich the two halves together and button everything up by securing the four tri-wing screws. And again, make sure all the buttons are working. And there you have it. So that actually ended up being a lot more fun of a mod than I actually anticipated. It also was a little bit easier than I thought. I think I was kind of uh, psyching myself out because, you know, the Joy-Cons are, it's a very small controller. It has a lot of screws and a lot of different components in such a small area. But actually, in the end, it can be very manageable. You just kind of have to approach it in a very organized fashion. And as you can see, uh, during my install, all I actually ended up using was the provided screwdriver and the driver bits. And the only tool that I provided for my own collection of tools was a spudger. So this can be done if you have very limited tools. And really, you can just use the screwdriver that's provided with the kit in order to complete the whole modification. So I'm actually really happy uh, with the results. And here you can see it on the switch itself and it actually looks quite nice. So as always, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over the pros and cons of this kit in my opinion. And of course, starting with the pros, first and foremost, my favorite thing and the reason why I actually bought the kit uh, was the D-pad conversion. So as you know, with a typical Joy-Con, instead of having the traditional d-pad you have these direction buttons so you got four buttons for each of the four directions and you know it, it's okay i understand why they did it so for me uh, doing the d-pad conversion was the primary purpose of reshelling these joy cons and i have to say that the implementation that extreme rate does for their kit is is perfect it, it it just it feels like it came from the nintendo factory like this the actuation of the buttons, it feels like it came like this. It it feels like a real traditional D-pad and there's nothing here that would make me think otherwise. The biggest pro of this product is the implementation of the traditional D-pad. And the last pro is, is the price. I only paid about $20 for this. And for $20, getting the benefit of a traditional D-pad, for me, that's worth $20. And on top of that, you get a pretty neat design, but, but really the D-pad implementation, to me, 100% is worth the $20. All right, so now let's talk about the cons. And really that's how Extreme Rate was able to accomplish this sort of color scheme and theme. And really the way that this was manufactured, it was manufactured using a, a black colored plastic. And then what they do is they apply a coating or a paint on top of that to achieve the color. Now, the only problem with that is if you did ding one of the Joy-Cons by you know setting it too hard on the table or something hits it and it chips the paint or the, the, the rubberized coating, you will expose the black plastic below it and you will be able to see it uh, very visibly. The, the next con is I did say that the install was, uh, for me, it was, it was simpler than I had expected. 
However, it is still pretty difficult. If you are a novice uh, to disassembling electronics, then th this might be a somewhat difficult mod. Now, the way that I had actually uh, done it in the video where you don't remove any of the ribbon cables, uh, I, I do think significantly makes the, the disassembly and the reassembly a lot easier. There's less steps, but still it is somewhat of a daunting mod because there are a lot of screws you gotta keep track of and there are a lot of components jam packed into such a small package. So those are the pros and cons, and I'm actually really excited to start using these, especially uh, if you are a Nintendo Switch Online subscriber. Uh, they do have a couple games from the Super Nintendo library, so I'm excited to play those, and especially getting some good use out of that D-pad while playing those games. I do hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. I release videos every Thursday, and as always, we'll see you next time.